guys, it's Jennifer and welcome back to my Flagstaff home. Today I am here to show you how to finish the outer edge of your basket with a wrapped edge. And I'm also going to show you really quickly how you can make an edge like this that has a, like a wrapped part and then a skipped space and a wrapped part and a skipped space. So we'll go over that too. Um, if you have not yet learned how to make a pine needle basket, I have a few videos that you can check out and they're all in the description box below this video. Just click on where it says show more and it will um, list uh, the links for those videos. One of them is a two part series that shows how to make baskets that use the end cap or fascicle on the pine needle to make a design, a more traditional kind of a, a design on a basket. The other video is called a step-by-step -step instruction or something like that. And that one shows how to make something that looks a little bit more like this. And then I have one more link for you that has an instruction video of, a, of one that I put on Rumble, which is a platform kind of like YouTube. I thought I would try it out. So anyway, that one is probably the best quality video. But um, anyway, so there's, there's several different options that you can check out if you need to learn how to make a basket. I have also linked for you in the space below other videos that I've done with techniques for making pine needle baskets. So be sure to check those out. But in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this wrapped edge. And so in just a minute, I'm going to move the angle of the camera and, and get so you can get up close with my hands and see what I'm doing. Um, you need to have a waxed polyester thread that will help the thread kind of grip on itself. And then, of course, you know, your other supplies, your needles and scissors and all of that kind of stuff. You can do this with pine needles that are just natural, but I like to use pine needles that are treated with vegetable glycerin. I have a video linked in the space below about that too. Um, it helps you to uh, keep the pine needles pliable even after they're dry. And it also deepens the color and it, it makes it smell like much more strongly of pine needles, which I love. So anyway, um, that's, that's kind of what I'm using here, but this technique you can use with um, whatever kind of pine needles that you're using, whether they're treated or not. So anyway, let me just start by saying that this finish uses a lot of thread. You wouldn't think that going from, um, between stitches, like, you know, just from here to here would use that much, but it can use, you know, like this much thread that you're wrapping around. So just make sure that you have enough thread. And if you happen to get to the end of making your basket and you're thinking, oh no, I might not have enough thread to do um, a wrapped edge, you can always change color. So when you're replacing your thread, you just replace it with a different color that's kind of a complementary color. So maybe you were using a brown thread to make your basket and you switch to a tan, or maybe you were using a yellow thread on your basket and you switch to white. So, so it really is fine to do that. Just keep in mind, you need a lot of thread to do this. So, okay. So without further ado, let me change the angle of the camera and let me show you how to do this. Okay, so here's my basket and you can see the wrapped edge that I've done so far on a good portion of it. And I have my gauge down here that helps me to keep the thickness of the outer edge the same all the way around. And I use it to make sure that the coils stay the same size throughout the basket. Um, so you'll see that and you're going to want to continue to add pine needles to this bundle of pine needles here so that it stays the same thickness. And then you're also going to notice that on my thumb, I use a silicone thimble and this just helps me to grip the needle so that my fingers don't slip off of it. So normally you would make another stitch, like you go around, you wrap around the back and then you stick into either straight into the stitch on the back or just to the left of, of the stitch. And that's how you would make a regular, just a regular stitch. But we're not going to do that right now. We're going to wrap instead. So what I'm going to do is take the thread and I am just going to wrap just like I did with the coil in the center. I'm just going to wrap really tightly. And do you see how my index finger is pulling the thread out here? So I'm going to wrap really tightly around and just keep wrapping 
I don't want any of the pine needle to show. If it does show, then oh, here's a little piece of pine needle I need to pull off. If it does show, you can just scrunch it down. But I'm just going to keep wrapping like this and keep it nice and tight and it helps to pull it with your index finger. Keep wrapping until I'm going to scrunch it a little. Do you see where the wrapping went right over to the next stitch? So I, what I'm going to do is when it touches the next stitch, I'm going to wrap one more time so that the thread goes just a little bit beyond, goes just a little bit beyond that stitch. And that is so it doesn't make a break when I start the next stitch. So after I get to that point, now I'm going to put in a stitch here to secure what I just wrapped. So I go into the back and I'm doing um, a split stitch. So I'm going straight into the stitch on the back and coming through straight into the stitch on the front. Pull this through and I'm holding it. Do you see how I'm holding it with my finger on the back? Because I don't want this wrapped part to come loose. And I have a really long thread here. This uses a lot of thread. <laughs> so, okay. So now I've just wrapped from one stitch to the next and I've secured it and now I don't have to hold it down anymore. So then I'm going to do it again. I go to the next one and I wrap around each time. Do you notice I'm putting my index finger down to hold it? So I just want to hold it in place. I'm keeping the thread really tight and then I'm holding it down with this finger really tight and then I hold it down and I keep going. And keep going and then now I've reached the next stitch I'm gonna cinch it back a little bit and then I'm gonna make another wrap and I want I'm actually gonna make two more because like I said before I want this wrapped part to go just a one wrap farther than where the stitch is um, and you'll notice if you don't do that and then you start wrapping between the next stitch it they'll separate and you'll see pine needle um, under there. So now I'm going to go into the back and out through the front, holding it with that index finger the whole time. Just made a little knot. <laughs> And then I give it a good tug. All right. And so now I've done two of them. So I'm just going to keep doing this. I'll show you. I'll demonstrate one more uh, just in case you're following along with me on this. I'm noticing that my gauge is getting a little bit loose. So I'm going to add in some pine needles to the bundle just so that I, I want to make sure that this this outer edge it's going to be super noticeable because it's wrapped in thread it'll be it'll be noticeable what the thickness is and so you don't want it to change in size and get thinner as you go along so every couple of stitches that you wrap just check check your gauge and make sure that it's the tightness you want it to be There you go. Okay, so I'll demonstrate one more time. I'm going to wrap between this stitch and this stitch. So I'm going to wrap it, hold it down with this in, with my index finger. Then I'm going to wrap again, hold it down, keep wrapping. Each time I hold the thread really tight with this index finger. And then I hold it down here with this one all the way around and I've gotten over to that stitch and I'm going to wrap one more time. Actually, I'm going to cinch it over. So I'm going to actually wrap two more times and now I'm going to secure it by going into the back, coming out in the middle of the stitch on the front. and then tug it really tight. And you just do that all the way around. 
Okay, so let me just show you real quick what you do if you want to do the every other stitch thing. So what you would do there is you would come over and you would come over here and just make a stitch, right? Instead of wrapping it, you would just make a stitch. And then the next one, you wrap and then secure it in place, just like I showed you. And then you do one where you just pull the thread over and make a stitch. And so each one, if I show you this basket right here, each one you can see there's a wrapped part and then there was a part where I just wrapped the thread over and made a stitch. And then I do the wrap, wrap, wrap one and then secure that. And then I pull the thread over and make a stitch. So it's as simple as that. So I'm going to continue to work on this until I get to the end. And then I'm going to show you how to end the basket. But the, I, I want you to come back because when you make a basket like this that has a complete wrapped edge, the ending looks very abrupt and it I don't think it looks that great. And your eye is really drawn to it because the color of the pine needle where you cut it off um, sitting on top of a wrapped edge just just kind of, I don't know, just it's too noticeable, I think. And so there is something that I always do with my baskets to kind of cover that part up. So make sure that you um, follow through with me to see how I end the basket. But I'm going to go ahead and finish the wrapping on the out outside and I'll come back to show you how to finish it up. Okay, so you can see that I am almost finished here. I'm going to go ahead and remove my gauge at this point. And I have a little bit of space between the end of this wrapped part and this. So I'm going to wrap a little bit more, not quite a full stitch. So I'm just going to do that same wrapping thing until the thread from the, the top part of the coil is overlapping the wrapped part on the bottom. So once I've done that, then I'm going to make a stitch right through the wrapped part on the bottom part of the coil. Just going to make a stitch in there. It's not going in directly into another stitch. And then I'm going to do it again right in the same place. So I'm just wrapping it around a couple of times and making a good stitch. It's a good thing that I'm finishing right now because I'm coming to the end of my thread. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hide this end piece in the wall of the basket. So I'm just going to stick it into right where the thread is coming out, right next to that. I'm going to stick it in, but do you see how I have my needle at an angle? So it's at an angle and I'm going to run it inside the wall of the basket, but it's going to come out on the back. So I want to get it good and lodged in there. Okay, so you can see that the needle is going in right here, but it's coming out down here. So that will make sure that the thread, the end thread is, is really held tight inside the wall of the basket. So. All right, so I pulled my needle off and I'm going to give it a really good tug and then snip it off. But make sure at this point, man, make sure you don't uh, cut a stitch because if you do, then you messed up your whole basket. All right, so now we've got this. All right, so what this is where we're going to end up when we cut this off. We're going to end up with this really abrupt ending. And so I'm going to show you how to um, how to cover that up. So you take your scissors and you make um, an, an angle, a cut at an angle. You're going to cut through this. All right. Let me show you that. You see how there's that cut part and it's super noticeable. Now, if you do the every other stitch thing, then when you cut that off, it just looks like one of the places where you skipped and your eye doesn't immediately go to that. It's, it blends in easier if you don't want to cover that up. But this is super noticeable. You got this really nice wrapped edge all the way around the basket. And then all of a sudden there's that, right? 
So what I like to do with it, and there, there are a variety of things that you can do, but what I like to do is put a little cluster of small pine cones. And in my area, the spruce trees, some of the spruce trees have these teeny little pine cones, but I've listed for you in the um, description box below a place on Amazon where you can get bags of these mini pine cones for not very much money. And you can get like a bag of 100, a bag of 250, and they're in varying sizes, but they're all small. So some of them are teeny weeny and some of them are bigger. And I just use a glue gun and form a little cluster. Um, oh, this is my name thing. I stamped my name on a piece of leather and uh, I got a stamp made of my signature and I, I glue that on. But you'll see that, see how I make the pine cones kind of fall off the edge of the basket. I kind of like to do that. So you could also use silk flowers. Um, my sister-in-law who lives in Florida has learned how to make baskets. And I was talking to her about possibly finding some little teeny, teeny seashells and gluing on a cluster of seashells on hers because there are actually pine trees in Florida. And so it would kind of go with you know, what is natural in Florida, but you could use any, any kind of little decorative thing that will cover up. This. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed learning how to do this. If you have any comments or questions, you can go ahead and ask them in the comment section. If you're having any problems working on your basket, and it would be easier for me to see what's happening with your basket, you can always send me an email and attach a picture of what you're working on. My email address is myflagstaffhome at gmail.com. Um, I've had people send me pictures to ask questions about what's going on with their basket. I've also had people who just want to show me uh, their, their finished product. So I'd love to see your basket when you're all finished. So anyway, thank you so much for watching you guys and I hope I'll see you again on my Flagstaff home. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.